Enjoy. So thank you for the intro and uh, thank you to be here. So today I will present the tool I've developed at Quartz Lab called Pyra, which uh, can help you to map your file system, but also uh, the link between all the executable files you have in it. So first of all, who am I? I'm a security R&D engineer at Quartz Lab, uh, where I do mainly vulnerability vulnerability research story and reverse engineering. So I, in fact, I don't really know the threat intel world, but I think it's really interesting to do cross boundaries and to just go into other community to exchange about our tools because in fact, when we do vulnerability research, mainly for clients, they just do uh, audits and then after the patch. But it is, we have in fact the same needs. So I think it is really interesting if we can just exchange about our approaches to just have more tools. Where, uh, whereas we didn't need to reinvent these tools as they already exist, but in another community, in another world, we don't really know well. Uh, I'm also part of the automated analysis team where I do a lot of tooling. So here is the list of uh, all our tools. A lot of them are public. So if you are interested, you can take a look. And today we will be focused on Pyra. So first of all, our problematic, what, why do we need this tool? So on my day-to-day -day task, I mainly focus on analysis firmwares. These firmwares are embedded into what I call big IoT objects, routers, smartphones, automotive, because you have a lot of embedded IoT stuff into cars. In fact, these OSs, uh, these firmwares are complete OS like Android, OpenWRT, usually it's Linux derivative, but you can also have real-time OS. And so you have, you need to analyze complex firmwares. So these firmwares contain one or more file systems and thousands of files. And you start your audit, your vulnerability research, and you need to understand quickly the big picture. You need to understand quickly how your firmware behave. If you are really lucky, you can have a root access on a real system, and so you can dynamically monitor your system. But usually you don't have the root access or you don't have the tool at all, the object at all, and you need just to analyze statically a firmware. So how can you can we understand this firmware quickly to know where we need to focus our research? So for that, we need a cartography, a kind of map to understand the interaction between components. Just a remark here, we'll be focused only on software components and not hardware components, on which you can also apply cartography, but it's a total different world. So you can do cartography for networks, you can do cartography for source code, for files, which is kind of obvious. You can check configuration files, for example, but you can also check executable files and dynamic linking, how they interact together. I'm a reverse engineer, so I love executable files and I love digging into these files, but I want to know which one I need to focus. So we decided to go on dynamic linking for the cartography need. Then we had also another point, really important point for us. It was we wanted to have a really efficient graphical interface because for us visualization is a key. And to really understand that, I will do a step aside and go into Greek mythology to do just a quick metaphor. So imagine you just have two people of the Greek mythology, Pyra, which is not only the name of the tool, but also a person of this mythology, and Sisyphus for the famous mice of Sisyphus. And you want to know if they are linked together, and if yes, what are their family linked? So the first solution you add is just read the ancient text, so here you have an extract I found on Wikipedia, but you have other text. It takes some seconds or minutes. You need to compute all you have read to understand the links. You can also just go and find a genealogic tree. And in 10 seconds, I can tell you, okay, Pyra is the mother of Helen. Helen is the grandmother of Sisyphus, so Pyra is the great-grandmother of Sisyphus. In 10 seconds, I was able to do the link. In fact, it is Absolutely the same thing I want to be able to do with my tool. I don't want to pass an output on my terminal and so on. Okay, I know how to do that, but it's long. It can be a little bit, I can be a little bit tired to do that and don't be efficient on really the core of my work, which is digging in one firmware and in one binary precisely and go really deep. So I want to have a really nice in interface. 
So to do that, I'm really not good to developing graphical interface because I'm not a front-end developer. So I will just check if some tools already exist. And I was really lucky because it is a tool source way already exists to do a code source analysis. I really advise you to use this tool if you're not used uh, to it, because if you need to analyze uh, C or C++ code, it's really efficient. You give it uh, the make file or the CMake, you run a little tool on it, and then it can be indexed by source trail. So I will show you quickly a demo. So here I have uh, indexed a project called Falco. It's Kubernetes related. It's not the project which is important. It's more uh, the quantity of code it has indexed. So here I think it's a little bit too small for you, but it's written like uh, more than 140,000 lines of code were indexed. So it, it starts to be quite a huge project. And so on the left, you have a graphical representation like a graph of the different types you have on your project. So for example, let's take a look. We can go on classes. For example, I take the callback class. On the left, you have all the graphical representation. On the right, you have the associated code. So here you can see, for example, the callback using the severity enum. It also uses this one. And this class is used by the function, for example, get callback. If I click on the function, on the right, it changed, and it's the opposite, so, so everything is linked. You could also uh, see all the, all the information grouped, um, sorry, all the types grouped in by the files in which they are declared, but also by module. So it's really powerful, I have a lot of possibilities, I've just shown you just a glimpse of it, so it's really powerful. We already use it when we have a white box analysis or with the code source. And so now the question was, okay, but could we use it to extend and be the graphical interface of our project? And the answer, in fact, is yes, because source trail also provides an SDK. So the only thing to do is you create your own parser to pass what you want to pass. Then you transform the data you have passed into something representable by source trail. So you need to be able to use classes, uh, functions, and so on, all the classical types you can have in object-oriented um, languages. You create a database and a project file with the SDK, and you can open it with source trail and navigate as I showed you before. So it was perfect for our tool, so we decided to go with source trail to create a our own parser called Pyra, and then to create a, to th th that will produce some results that can be visualized with source trail. So first, we need to show, to define how we can represent a file system as a language. We wanted to map two things, all the executable files, so here we handle elf files and PE files, but also all the symlinks that point on the binaries, because it's really important for your analysis to know all the names that an executable can have, because in fact, a symlink is just another name for your executable, a name and a pass. So that's why we represent symlinks into type def, and binaries, they can export functions, and they can export symbols, and can, they can also import functions and import symbols, so we decide to represent them as a class with functions or methods and with variables or fields. So now let's take a look at the Pyra workflow. So first of all, we take as an entry an already extracted firmware. So if you need to mount your firmware, your image, to extract your firmware with some specialized tool like Beanwalk, Unblob, or just unzip your, your, file, your file to create the whole directory, create it. Then you give as an entry the root directory. It will be considered as a root directory for all the symlink resolution. So if you want to map only a third part of the system, it's really important to recreate the whole arborescence before to be able to have all this resolution uh, done well. Then we iterate over all the binaries to, de to detect first the binaries and then list exported symbols and exported functions. For that, we use a well-known tool leaf. Then we resolve the symlinks, so that's why it's really important to really do your setup before. And then we solve imports. For me, it's really the most interesting part here 
because it is also the most challenging and the most difficult one. We want here to list all the imported libraries and list all the imported symbols of each binary with leaf, and then we want to resolve the, the imports. To do that, we did not reproduce the complex behavior of LDD because we didn't want to handle all the kernel cases. We wanted to have this tool for the beginning of our analysis to just give us a start and a big picture. We, the corner cases, in fact, is our role of the analyst, is our job. So, for example, to solve the library's inputs, we just check in the whole firmware if there is one library with this name. If it is the case, we do a link. And if there is more binaries, we are not able to solve. So we just say to the user, big warning, it is impossible to solve. So you need to you check it by hand and see what's happened. It can be a little bit annoying when you have two libc, which can open in certain projects where they love to ship their own libc for whatever reason. So maybe if it is okay, just remove this part of uh, before indexing. Then for imported symbols and functions, we just check all, in all the imported libraries we have already resolved and check if they provide uh, this kind of symbol or this kind of function. Just a quick word for PE world and Windows world. We have partially resolved the imports because there is a lot of issue and different comp uh, behavior, uh, including uh, case sensitive and case insensitive imports. And for the moment, we only handle case uh, sensitive. It's all written in the readme if I'm maybe mistaken and missing the way. So uh, Pyra uh, is run in two steps. So first you run Pyra and then you open the results with source trail. So it provides you a way to share your results with your colleague without sharing a firmware. So I don't know, for example, you will go to a client or you, you just have uh, access to the target you want to map only a few minutes, only for one uh, person for whatever reason. So you can run Pyra engine and send the results to your colleagues, to your uh, host, or to your analysis machine, for example. So it provides you also a little bit of um, remote tool possible. So now it's demo time. So here we have uh, run Pyra on a Netgear router. It is a target we have analyzed and you have a public blog post if you're interested for the last point run one year ago. So it was a router with a lot of vulnerable uh, stuff. It was an OpenWRT, so Linux derivative uh, system. So as we have seen here, you, we have a lot of type depth. So to remind you, it is simlink. So for example, as it is a firmware based on Linux, as usual, all the command line, all the tools you have on your command line on your terminal are impl implemented by BuzzyBox. So just by clicking on BuzzyBox, you can see all the links, all the binary that points on BuzzyBox. So it could be really interesting to know if, by example, you have a vulnerability on BuzzyBox, Okay, I can change all the behavior or all the bash scripts of the whole system. For usually when you start to use uh, and navigate into your binary, you just navigate and just see what happened. Okay, I have all these binaries. Uh, if you're a little bit used to uh, um, analyze all your firmware, you can see why, which binary has a usual name and which binary can be constructor related. And usually when we analyze firmwares, we are really focused on constructor related binaries because they just mess up usually. And we don't have the time to find a vulnerability into a Linux system. So either it's configuration or either it's constructor stuff. So okay, I can just go and see, but I can also just Search, for example, let's say we have a vulnerability on the version of libcrypt, on libcrypt, of libcrypto we have on the router. So, okay, I have here. So, they just import libc, usual stuff. Well, too many imports. But it is imported by a lot of stuff. So, okay, I can check a little bit. As usual, it's, um, Imported by libcurl, okay, I know, but maybe there is other stuff. Okay, there is lib firmware check, something I don't really know. It have the name FW, so firmware in this name could be really interesting. I go on this, okay, it's import libcurl, libs crypto, libswed, it could be really interesting because if it, it imports libcurl, 
it do some requests. So maybe I could interact with this request as there is potentially a vulnerability on the version I have recognized. And here you can see all some binary, we don't really know the name, and as in part nothing, maybe it could be a service. So it could be a first example of how to use Pyra, but it's more like in a discovery phase. Then let's say you have already a little bit analyze your tool. You know you want to, st to see, uh, you have PUCFU. Okay, it's a binary. It is exposed as a service. You already know that because you have do a little bit of analysis and you know that lib crypto has a vulnerability. Okay, so I can check if there is all the way to go from my service, which is exposed to lib to lib crypto because I don't know how to type. Yeah. Is better. So I can search. And here you have this beautiful graph. We tell you really efficiently how to go from a binary to another. And then you can see uh, which binary you need to dig in to uh, find the potential vulner vulnerability. And the last example could be, okay, now I want to check all the things using libcurl because libcurls are always interesting. But more precisely, I want to just check the option given to libcurl because sometimes, in this case it's happened, they deactivate SSL verification because certificates are complicated and they don't have the time to handle that. So, okay, I will check. Set up. Yeah, okay, so I will check all the call to uh, curl is set up, so all this call to this function to set the option of curl that are direct or indirect. So here I have the whole graph pointing on the function that just set the vulnerability, uh, the option, sorry, so I can just check all these binaries, check if they are exposed to the service, but it's just a list like of less than 15, so it can be done by hand. And I have just have this information quite easily. So in fact, you have a lot of possibilities to use Pyra, usually at the beginning of your audit, but if you have more precise information to looking for, you can also use all the custom graphs to provide that. So now we are happy the demo works. So you can also export all your results into a JSON format. And so the JSON file could be used to be processed, to be used in another tools, but it can be also used to just diff the result of Pyra between two uh, versions of the same firmware. So we have done that for the same firmware, we have done the demo on it. And so for example, with a simple script, we have Pass. It is available on the repository for interesting. And we can say, okay, so we have no longer this version of curl, but another one, just a little upgrade. You have a kernel module that had been added in that filter. But we have also some changes really interesting into the uh, common binary that are still here. So for example, we do a more, a more secure uh, sprintf. We do some uh, upgrade of libcurl, but if we continue and read just 100 lines, we can be a little bit aware quickly of the, if there is a big change of behavior between two, uh, two binaries which have the same name. So just by diffing the symbols, you can have a lot of information on it. Uh, and without using binary diffing on all your, to, uh, all your binaries, which can take you a, a long time. And so thanks to this little JSON parsing, you can just be able quickly to target one or two binary because you see there is a lot of change, a lot of symbols that have been added or removed. And so you want to dig a, a deeper to see if uh, your vulnerability has been patched or not, if it uh, is imply a new complete feature because we know constructors don't always document everything. So we are not always aware of uh, what I've changed exactly because usually just security fix. So if we want to monitor it closely, it can be uh, really efficient. We have some non-limitations. So we rely only on leaf. So we have all the leaf limitations. For the moment, there is uh, no support on the last release version of leaf for MIPS architecture because there is issue when you list all the exported symbols. 
We have submitted a patch that will partially solve the problem. It has been merged on Leaf, but not on the release for the moment. So when uh, Romain Thomas, the developer of Leaf, will release the next uh, version, it will be done. So Trail is also an archive project. So for the moment, it works. Everyone who have tried it work, but you have a fork. It's called Open Source Trail, who just have changed the CMake. And so it, uh, you can use this fork if it's, uh, the archive project does not uh, work for you. But the other point, which is more annoying for us, is the SDK that is no longer maintained, and you have no longer a uh, fork that, wo uh, that work on it. So to do that, we implement our own API directly in Python, so no more complex uh, binding, Python binding uh, compilation to do, and so on, as it is the case, uh, actually. So it will be really soon for the moment. Uh, we run some tests and so on to be sure it has the same behavior. So if you are interested by SourceWell but not by Parwa, it's completely okay. You can quickly develop in Python uh, some tools uh, that can just create uh, some uh, Pyra project, uh, sorry, some source trail projects that can be visualized with source trail and provide you a really efficient graphical uh, interface. So I hope it will be uh, released before the end of the year and uh, it will be a full Python uh, project. So as a conclusion, uh, Pyra is available as a Python package or a Docker, or a Docker image. It can be downloaded directly from our Quarks Lab GitHub. Uh, in the low, in a longer time, we want to add to SourceWell new capabilities to add to Pyra new capabilities. For example, we would like to be able to graphically show the thing I've shown you before, but also to add metadata on it. For example, when I talk about analyzing a full system, it could be really useful for us to have HLOOKUP directly integrated in it. And so we can, for example, I don't know, having all the known binary in green, so we know this binary is mainly known, if we want to be more on the constructor side and check the binaries, we don't look at the hash lookup uh, to uh, find the binaries. To do that, we will need to be able to extend source rail, and if it is the case for the moment we are looking for an intern currently to do it, uh, if we'll do it, we, I suppose, I hope uh, we will uh, do something for source rail which is no longer maintained, so at least maintain the CMake to be able to compile it. Uh, and also, when Numbat will be integrated into um, Pyra, we'll publish it directly on PyPy for the moment. We have some restriction with the uh, compilation of the bindings. And uh, that's all. So if you have some questions, don't hesitate. And thank you.